Welcome back to Comic Book News. Today we're going to talk about something we haven't talked about for a while, and that would be Spider-Man. So we're going to do a review of Spider-Man number one, written by J.J. Abrams and his son Henry Abrams, with art by Sarah Pacelli. Today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Today we'll talk about Spider-Man number one. Written by J.J. Abrams and Henry Abrams, his son, his young son. So this is instantly a warning flag to me and to many comic book fans, Spider-Man fans, and just uh, crotchety old dudes in general, right? Why is J.J. Abrams writing comics and why is he bringing his teenage son in here? And man, I wanted to not like this comic. And I read it once and I said, I hate this comic. I really don't enjoy it. But then, you know what? I went back and I gave it another chance and I reread it and tried to look at it from a different frame of mind. So, in the wake of the news that Spider Man, uh, Sony is going to try to hold on to the rights for Spider Man as long as possible and milk more money out of it, either out of Disney uh, or, or, or by making their own movies, like the frankly excellent Into the Spider-Verse cartoon, which I thought was one of the best Spider-Man movies of all time, if not the best. But what that movie showed is that you can take Spider-Man in weird directions. You can take it in completely tangent directions that the audience never has heard of or has expected, whether they're a comic book fan or not, right? Spider-Verse took amazing... Uh, the Spider-Ham and Spider-Man Noir and all these other crazy, like, just multiverse spider-man concepts and crammed them into a mainstream movie and made it great it was really excellent um so what that what did that tell us that tells us that you can take spider-man in some totally you can change fundamental things you don't have to stick to the core continuity of the comics especially when you consider how much they cheated in core continuity when it comes to Spider-Man and One More Day and what they did with his marriage to Mary Jane, how they dissolved it by making a deal with the devil and bringing back Aunt May and all this junk that just muddled the continuity. They could have had them divorce, which I think would have been a really cool thing uh, like to explore in comics. And since then, Spider-Man has sort of wandered, right? They've looked for how do you, what is the concept for Spider-Man? Uh, well, this book definitely takes it in a new direction. So let's check out that direction. Where else? In the Million Dollar Comics Cam. So here it is. So here we've got the cover that I pulled online. And this was the actual cover of the actual comic uh, that I bought yesterday. Okay, so they've left out the background with the, with the villain in there for whatever reason. Um, but let's dive right into the story. So first of all, the, uh, something I hated at first. Tiger. Tiger, Mary Jane keeps calling, is looking for Spider-Man in this burnt out thing. I'm like, Tiger, what? That's just like, all right, Tiger, we get it. That's catchphrase cute, but why would she be doing that? But then, it, you know, it actually occurred to me, you don't want to give away Spider-Man's identity. Perfect. I mean, she could call out Spidey, but, you know, this is just as good. So anyway, we're, we're put, I, I guess this is what you call in media res, right? Where you're put, dropped right in the middle of a story. And it looks like Spider-Man's, been on the losing end of this battle. We can see his arm is really messed up here. And, uh, and, and, and from his conversation with Mary Jane, it's things are looking grim. He makes some sort of inside jokes that don't quite make sense. And when I first read it, I was like, I don't, this doesn't make any sense. This is bad writing. But as I thought about it, I, I feel like it's details of the plot that just have yet to be revealed. So maybe it's good writing. Um, so as we move forward, we get to see our first glimpse at uh, uh, our big bad, they call him Cadaverous. And one thing I didn't like about the writing here is that we never hear him called that. We just hear, like, the news once say, the, vill the villainous creature known only as Cadaverous. Kind of a cheap way to do it, but whatever. And, um, spoiler alert here, folks. There's going to be spoilers for this story. So if you haven't read it and you care about those sort of things, mm, go pick it up. Right off the bat, Mary Jane is killed. Right, Spider-Man goes nuts and gr grabs her. The bad guy gets away, and we cut to the funeral, where uh, we get our first glimpse at uh, apparently Peter and Mary Jane's son Ben. Whatever universe this is, Peter and Mary Jane are still together, 
they had uh, a son named Ben, and uh, mommy died. Cut to 12 years later. Okay, did this have to be a double page spread for three words? I'm, I'm, did it? It didn't. But anyway, we get to meet the now, presumably like 15, 16 year old Ben Parker, right? So he's the same age Peter Parker was when he first became Spider-Man, I guess. And uh, we get to sort of meet him. He goes, he's a nice kid. He makes breakfast for, 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 uh, Whoever he's living with, turns out he's staying with Aunt May. And when he gets to school, he's immediately confronted with a bully situation that, you know, he takes care of and, like, just beats the heck out of this this guy, I guess. Just, like, takes care of this really big guy, which is not no one he finds unusual. Apparently, this is the fourth time this week since Tuesday that he's been, like, busted for beating up bullies. Okay, we get it. He's a do-gooder. Uh, so who gets called to the office but dad, dear old dad, right? And uh, this is where we finally get to meet, see Peter Parker 12 years later. And um, apparently he lost his arm in that battle. And now normally in the conversation it comes out, you know, that they, that she he's staying. The son, Ben, lives with Aunt May most of the time while Peter's traveling the world as a photojournalist. This is actually something I like because... I think they've toyed around with Peter's career over the years. They've tried to, oh, let's make him a teacher. Let's make him a, like a high school teacher or a college teacher or a professor. Terrible. The, the perfect career for a superhero is photojournalist, right? So I like it. Another t- thing that I like. Um, now, this is... Quickly, we realize what this is turning into, right? This is turning into... Oh my gosh, Ben has spider powers and he's just discovering it. How unusual. Oh, his his hand stuck to the door. Well, we've only seen that like 20 times now, including in the, the Spider-Verse and the Spider-Man movies and whatever else. All right. Uh, you know, so we get to learn uh, that he's living with Aunt May and, uh, you know, he goes, he gets detention for beating up bullies and he meets fe- a fellow kind of like do-gooder a uh, new girl in town and he's instantly on the make for kind of cool that's like 15 16 year old kid might do right you're in detention new girl comes in you make your move um in a, in a kind and gentle way of course so he's trying to engage her in some conversation next we get a little quick glimpse at at, at our villain this guy cadaverous and if they're trying to creep us out with these weird sausage fingers and like kind of cockroachy kind of look they're doing it uh, reminds me a lot of uh, if you ever read Martial Law, there was a character called the Sleep Man who was really super creepy. Anyway, we get a little bit of character building here. We learn a little bit more about Aunt May and Peter. How Peter's basically just always on the run, always traveling as a photojournalist, kind of abdicating his responsibility as a dad and and like letting Aunt May raise her. He feels guilty, obviously, about uh, MJ being dead, so he's not Spider Man anymore. Kid, meanwhile, you know, is is having crazy dreams and and wakes up on the ceiling and this is where we learn actually we kind of learn in the phone call that aunt may's like you know he's having problems that sort of remind me of the problems you had when you were his age and and it's sort of a hint to what we find out next is that in in this universe apparently she knows peter's spider-man who knows how long she's known has she always known uh, maybe and anyway she sort of gives him a nudge in the right direction says, go check out the, under the floorboards in the attic and he goes up there and digs through some stuff. And what does he find? Okay. Um, I forgot to mention the one little piece here is the little piece of dialogue uh, back and forth between the father and the son, between Peter Parker and Ben. Right? They're arguing back and forth. And he's like, Ben is like, you've never taken a risk in your life. You've never stuck your neck out for anybody. Blah, blah, blah. Obviously doesn't know he's Spider-Man, right? So what are we setting up? here for right he's going to learn about the true nature of power and responsibility and etc there's even a riff on power Aunt May is like peter you have more power than you know in your relationship with your son okay it's a little schmaltzy but i i bought it you know what i liked it uh now the the the, the villainous character the setup it's still mysterious we don't really know what's going on there he's a little bit generic the name Cadaverous, this could go in different ways. And and the fact that it's not just mainstream Spider-Man continuity, 
that used to be something that maybe would bother me, but in this day and age, I don't think it does. Especially with Spider-Man, where his continuity is so muddled that, and and now even the ownership rights are are, are up in the air. So it's a time for pot- potentially a lot of um, a lot of change for Spider-Man in the comic book world. Will Marvel? Uh, do what they did with the X-Men or allegedly did with the X-Men and just sort of say, hey, we're going to put a lot less emphasis on Spider-Man for a while till we get the rights back. Frankly, it wouldn't surprise me. Why wouldn't they do that? Um, so, you know, I wanted to hate Spider-Man number one by J.J. Abrams and Henry Abrams. The art by Sarah Pacelli, solid, good colors by uh, Dave Stewart. I don't, I'm not a particular fan of this cover, but luckily there were multiple covers to choose from, including a Chip Kids cardstock variant, and you can pay whatever you want and buy as many copies of this as you want. Not a big fan of that. But hey, if you want to read a Spider-Man story that you're not really sure where it's going, and uh, have some a decent new spin on uh, an old favorite character who's been in need of love for a while, I'm going to say go pick up Spider-Man number one and check it out along with me. We'll see. Uh, it, it's got a lot of room to go south. But uh, you know what? I'm going to have some optimism for once. And, uh, and I'm going to give this one a tentative thumbs up. You know, speaking of thumbs up, you know, there's a, a couple little buttons down there. There's a thumbs up and a thumbs down. If you like this video, try clicking on the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and click on the thumbs down. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you want to get more info. And hey, there's a little bell icon down there too you can even ring if you want to get informed uh, whenever I drop a new video like this one. So hey, thanks everybody for watching and supporting this channel. We'll see you next time.